Gabby, welcome to Live Like It's True. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And it's such a joy to have an interview with you and praise, praise God. Yes, Gabby, you've been such a blessing to me. Now I've only gotten to know you a little bit through the internet because you live in Ecuador. (laughs) So we're not exactly going to cross paths all the time. Um, But you were part of my launch team for Comparison Girl, right? No Te Comparis, right? Yes, that was one of the books that I, it really changed my perspective on how I could um, relate to others and how, and also how I saw Christ as my biggest and greatest possession Mm -hmm. rather than to compare myself to other people. So I remember that that was the first time that I heard about you and about your book. And then you wrote another book called Controlling Girl. So I went and after Comparison Girl, I bought that because I sadly, I suffer from both things <laughs> well I do too <laughs> apparently yeah obviously yeah. I do too <laughs> no, but it's, wow. it has been such a blessing yeah mm, well you are a blessing I just remember you just ha- having such a joyful countenance when we would meet on those zoom groups I mean we had a lot of women involved <laughs> yeah. in that and I was just telling a friend um about our interview coming up and she was like, well, how, how did you know her? I'm like, I don't know. I just keep, you know, noticing her on Instagram and God just put her in front of me. And what I, what I started noticing is the little scarves that you're wearing. (laughs) And I was like, oh, I just, I thought they were so cute. And then I learned, oh no, there's a more sad reason for wearing your scarves on your head. So you have cancer, right? So, and we're going to jump into that here in just a minute. I want you to tell us our story, but first I want to let our guests know a little bit about you. Um, You are Gabby Puente. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you are a community manager. Um, You're earning your certificate in biblical counseling, right? Uh, You work for an organization called Compassion Connection. um, And it's an organization for churches and individuals um, focusing on church planting and training leaders in Ecuador, right? And then you're also a member of La Fuente Church in Quito. Is that right? Did I say it correctly? That's perfect to Spanish. (laughs) Oh, I don't think it's perfect, but you're being very kind. (laughs) And Gabby, do you have a family too? I, yes. I don't know that we've talked about that. So I live with my parents part of the week and part of the week I live um, in the property where I work, which is in the countryside. Okay. So my parents live in the suburbs of the city and I come and stay with them. And I am the only child. Uh, I had a brother, but he passed away uh, oh. 10 years ago. Oh, Gabby, so, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was really hard, but the Lord uses every situation for his glory and for our good. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that I think was something that, that he used for um, me to understand and love him more. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So your family has been through a lot. So you are not married though. No, 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 no husband. (laughs) Well, maybe there will be, what's that? I want to have kids too. Oh, yes. How old are you though? So I am 27. 27. Uh, okay. This year I will be 28. Okay. Uh-huh. You're just about the same, just a little bit older than my daughter. So, um, well, Gabby, tell us a little bit about this surprise with cancer. This, you were not anticipating this being part of your year. So uh, tell us what happened. Yes. So around this time last year, I was like laying on my bed. I found out that I had a lump uh, on my breast Mm -hmm. and in my family, there's no history of breast cancer at all. So at the beginning, we, with my mom, we didn't think of anything wrong. We were just like, well, this is weird. But then uh, we went to a gynecologist and she said, no, it's like a fibroadenoma. Uh, It's very common in like women that are around 30s, like 25, but no, it cannot be cancer because you are very young and you don't have a family history of cancer. And we were like, well, this is okay. But something in my head uh, said, look, we should ask for another opinion. Mm-hmm. And I believe that was the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we went to another doctor and he said, this is a little big. It was about five centimeters the lump 
Mm. And he said, well, well, we will do a biopsy. So they did a biopsy and we waited like two or three weeks because we thought it was nothing. And then the results came and my parents went to pick them up uh, because I was not in the city. And that is when they found out oh. that it was um, carcinoma stage three that had already invaded like some of the lymph nodes on my armpit. Mm. So that was that was a shock, um, a complete shock. And then from so that happened um, at the end of May, beginning of June. And I started with uh, the first chemotherapy at the end of July. So after exams and MRIs and a lot of um, a lot of echoes and things like that and doctor appointments and my life changed very quickly and very drastically and that's when I started treatment and I am in treatment right now doing radiotherapy so that's that's a summary of what has been going on this year okay oh my goodness and I can just imagine you thinking like, Lord, I'm doing all of this work, all of this training. This is not, you're interrupting, like I'm doing good things for you. Did you have any of those sorts of thoughts as you were, as you were contemplating cancer? At the beginning, it was, I think more um, like immediately when I felt so in shock, Mm. I understood that whenever we are like eating and chewing and learning good theology in times of suffering and in times of like unexpected news, the theology comes right into our minds Mm. and and right into my heart immediately. So um, the first thought that came to my head was a song from, from a Christian group here that it's, it's about job. And it says, how can we say, to good things, yes, from you, Lord. And how can we reject bad if you are sovereign over all? Mm-hmm. So that was the first thought. And then, of course, mm-hmm. there were the doubts and uh, and the questioning and the lament and some complaints. Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. After this assurance, the beginning assurance, it came like um, some days, dark days of, of questioning God's will. And I didn't know how to, I was like, is this allowed mm. <laughs> Is for me allowed to go to him and, and cry mm. or, or just ask him. And that is when I found David in some of the Psalms and Job and Habakkuk mm. and some other um, authors in the scriptures that pointed me back to, to God and the relationship that they had with him uh, on questioning him, but at the same time, going back to remembering uh, God's character yeah. in their lives. So yes, there was like, God, why I have, like, for example, I have never, ever, you know, go around and partying and do all this crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And then this happens and I don't understand. Mm. So yeah, questions like that were, um, like they came and went, came and went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure lots of different conflicting thoughts going on in your mind. But what I love about what you just said is, you know, here I asked the question thinking like, I'm preparing to do great things for you, God, why are you interrupting? But you're looking at that preparation as, yeah, you were preparing and God was giving you in advance the theology that deep, like you said, the, the, the theology that's hard to chew and uh, you have to wrestle with it and you, and it, but it feeds our souls that, that good theology that you had been, you know, fork and knife (laughs) theology, (laughs) like the steak, right. You had been digging into that and it was there for you when you needed it. Um, and I, I think I maybe even know the song you're talking about. Um, I think I've heard it in Spanish and, uh, so we'll have to, maybe we can, I don't know, we'll share that and, and the, on the, um, in the show notes, that song, but, um, so you're also talking though about lament, right? These passages of scripture tell, talk to us more about what is lament? Like, What did you not know about lament before going through cancer? Yeah, 
that is a really really good question because I was like uh, I didn't know if I was able to to cry to God mm, yeah. and because I think in the way that sometimes I I understood lament was more like yeah just emotions and that's it and just like let your emotions go and then God knows you and loves you and, and he does but at the same time in all of that we have to remember who he is and lament is this this path that it comes it's between the suffering of this world and the trials and pain and the promises mm. of the world ahead with him mm. of eternity so it's that stretch that we have to walk not rushing it mm. but just with the lord and with the word constantly like feeding ourselves in the scripture and remembering who god is and what he has done in our lives and i think one of the essentials of lament is um going to God and be honest about the pain yeah. because in Hebrews it talks about that he's a great priest that he came and he understands us and I love like that passage for me is it's like an anchor to my soul mm -hmm. because it reminds me of who like of who he is and also what he what he's given me and that is himself and mm -hmm. the consolation and the comfort that a God that understands every struggle, like that God is my is my savior. Mm -hmm. And I can approach to him and find grace for the time of need. And that was like, there were many days that I felt that I needed so much of that because I felt despair. So um, also there's a, a song, like there are many songs, like 43 and 42, that David asked the Lord, what what are you doing when are you gonna answer me why are you so silent and then afterwards he replies to his soul and he says um but my soul waits in my lord in you shelter and my refugee so i think with lament i learned to to go to him and to be honest and and that he can take that he's yeah. the lord and that he can take all my my sorrow and that he responds greatly with his grace mm. uh, whenever I go to him. And one of the books that I read uh, in that season was Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy. Mm. And in that book, it said that lament takes faith because it goes to a God and and asks him, like, what is your plan? And help me to to endure it. Mm. So, yeah, I think that, that was one of the greatest lessons that I have um uh, like learn through this trial. Mm, I love that, Gabby. So you're saying, you know, I'm I'm dealing with this suffering in the here and now. I'm looking to the then, you know, what God has promised for me. And I'm living in this stretch between and I'm asking the questions. You know, God can handle it. It's okay, but I come to him with my sorrow and disappointments. Uh, because I mean, this isn't what God had intended for us originally. Mm -hmm. God created Eden. He wanted us to have the pleasures evermore. It's because of sin that cancer even exists. It's because of sin that we are separated from him. It's because of sin that we don't live in Eden anymore. And so it's very appropriate for us to lament all of the sorrow because God is not, this is not what God designed for us in the first place. And, and, um, so I, I think that's so appropriate. And in this uh, study that I've written about Sarah, what I'm noticing is God's promises, you know, that there's, it's, I, I think of them like a set of parentheses, like he, he makes the promise and he keeps the promise, you know, there's, mm -hmm. they always, they always come in pairs. Mm -hmm. And what we would like is for them to be like this, you know, for them to be right in tight, <laughs> but they're kind of like, they're far apart <laughs> from each other yeah. and he makes the promise and we know someday he will keep the promises, but there is this long stretch in between mm -hmm. and why, you know, God in the Bible, God spent thousands of years between making the promise that he would send Jesus and then sending Jesus. Like what, yeah. why so much time, you know, why was he willing to spend this time? And I think you just gave us the answer. Because you said that it's in this long stretch that our faith grows, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. and without without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? 
but that's also in that long stretch that we learn his faithfulness. And that's what I see you doing. Like you're not just lamenting over how hard it is. You're also anchoring yourself in the promises to come. Uh, and that, and you know, that's what Sarah did too. Mm -hmm. Sarah lived her whole life living in a foreign country and living without the comfort of family, of a home. She lived in a tent, you know, it was, it was temporary. She lived her whole life. I mean, she, 25 years, she waited for this baby that she had been promised. Mm -hmm. She kind of lost hope on that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things that she I think when they moved to this promised land, I think they thought it was going to happen like that. I think yeah. she was probably doing pregnancy tests on the way there <laughs> yeah. and we, you know, picturing we're going to get there. I'm going to have all these kids. We're going to, yeah. you know, start buying up land. Yes. And, Planning and, expectations. Yes. And yeah. none of that happened in her lifetime. So she lived her whole life going through what you're kind of experiencing in this year, right? The stretch yeah. of the in-between, like knowing that the promise exists, but just not seeing how, how do you see, uh, some parallels in your own story to what Sarah experienced? Yeah, I think that, um, so I remember, so I write journals, I write journals and journals and I ask God for, for things and for desires of my heart and expectations and I was reading when I first, uh, like in the first couple of months, I was like, well, I need to reread, reread my journals and see God's faithfulness uh, in my past because he's still the same God today as I'm going through a very hard thing. Yes. So I went through one of them and then it said like, it was an entry that said something like, God, I really, really want to know you and understand you more mm -hmm. and I really want to to get to experience you in my life because I'm tired of sin I'm tired of pride I'm and I remember I was reading that and one of the things that he has done through cancer is is that he has accomplished that in mm -hmm. many ways but it was in 2019 mm -hmm. so in that moment I, I was like, yeah, I want this and I want more godliness. And I grew like step by step. But this period of time has been the answer of that prayer, like a few mm -hmm. years ago, that wow. I could savor God and and that he has cleansed me uh, from a bunch of sin, like pride and also jealousy and um, just trying to control my life because in reality, we don't have the control, but just that illusion. And he has come so quick um, in like saving my my own mind and my own heart for himself and cleansing it from these things that capture it. But it was not a response back then that like, you know, when we pray, we, well, in my case, I'm, I always think, oh, I wish there was an angel here to tell me something <laughs> or that I can see Christ. But I have seen him in this painful path, mm. more like sweeter and more present than I have ever seen him in my entire life before. Wow. So it, it has been like this waiting time. And also like I pray, I pray for my health. I pray for, for the treatments to work and for him to, to, um, heal me and I know there that there's no promise in the Bible that says oh you will be healed mm -hmm. from cancer mm -hmm. but I know that he has done a deeper healing in my heart mm -hmm. that it's it goes to to what we all hope for and to our goal which is a life with him and eternity with him being more like him yeah Gabby, that is just uh, precious to me that you prayed, you asked God for these things, and this was God's way of answering. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I love that is, that was his um, work in your heart to want for you to even ask those things, mm -hmm. but an even greater work that you see him answering those prayers in your suffering. And so I want to, I want to, at the end, I want to ask you about, um, these promises that, 
you've held on to. But before we go there, I want to circle back to what you said. Yeah. Oh, God, God is cleansing you, right? Of these, like you would love for him to cleanse you of the cancer, but he's cleansing you of sin. And so how has your cancer helped? I want to just talk about those three that you mentioned, pride, jealousy, and control. Mm-hmm. How has the cancer helped to free you or cleanse you of those sins? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a great, great question. I think for, je- uh, for jealousy, uh, there have been many times in my life where I, I see other people's life and other people like through social media or through my group of friends that mm-hmm. I am focusing on them and on, on what they are doing or what they have instead of like what God in his grace has given me. And at the same time, I'm re- rejoicing with them on what God has given them. So cancer came into my life. And in one moment, I thought many of those things are temporary. Mm. Many of those things will, will go away. Like, I don't, I don't have an assurance that I will be healthy again, or that I will be sick with other things. So then seeing my life through that lens and seeing other people's life through that lens Mm. helped me realize more like, um, it's Jesus. It's Jesus who we should put our eyes on instead of others and the work that he's doing in my life. And at the same time, the work that he's doing in other people's life, it made me love them more rather than to envy or having jealousy towards Mm -hmm. what they had. So, yeah. So what about control? How has God been, you know, purifying this? Cause I struggle too with control. Um, and I, and I know you probably like me, you've got your plans for the future. And so how has cancer kind of taken control out of your hands? So when I was like 15, I prayed God, like, you know, I, eventually you will give me a husband and kids. And I picture myself at 27 or 28 having that already. But now, and with this, like last year, I realized that that would be would be harder for me and it is because after this treatment with with radiotherapy I will have to take a drug that is called tamoxifen and what this drug does it's like it suppresses all this estrogens in my body and uh, one of my dreams has always been to be a mom and to Mm -hmm. have family and I know that um, the Lord institutes the family in the scripture and it's a way that he um, shares the gospel with the world and I wanted that always but now with this news it, it is going to be harder because tamoxifen um, causes one of the things is infertility mm-hmm. and it brings an earlier menopause it's called a chemical menopause mm-hmm. so I will have to take this pill every day for the next 10 years Mm-hmm. Uh, so all my like plans and expectations and things that I wanted to do and when it, and ways that I will meet someone or things like that were just like cancer came and it's it's harder it's so much harder uh it it I have to go back to like that is one of the prayers that and the questions that I ask him like why God why mm-hmm. I can there's a possibility even greater now that I I'm not able to have kids that I am not able to provide. Like I am the only daughter of my family, of my parents to, to, you know, give uh, grandsons or grandchildren to them or things like that. And there's a verse on I say, I don't remember the, the, the exact um, reference. Uh, yeah. Reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it says the Lord is talking to the, to the foreigners and to the eunuchs and he's telling them, Like, I am better than Mm. a thousand kids. Yeah. And I am better than than what you can have on this earth. And Mm. you will come and live with me in my household. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that I wanted to control so badly. And the Lord was like, no, this is going to be in my time, if he wills, and in my way. Mm -hmm. So I think it it's um it reminds me of Sarah too Mm, yeah absolutely oh Gabby I'm so sorry that is such a hardship and so so much pain and I know there are many listeners who are going through the same thing like just looking at the the probability of Mm -hmm. having a family is 
it's narrowing. Um, and that, you know, that's hard, but I love the verses in Galatians Galatians for Paul is comparing Sarah and Hagar mm. and, um, Hagar, you know, she represents what we can do without God's help. And Sarah represents what we can only do with God's help. Sarah was the one who didn't have children, but look at what, um, Paul is quoting. I think it's from Isaiah. He says, Re- rejoice childless woman, unable, mm. unable to give birth, burst into song and shout for you who are not in labor for the children of the desolate woman will be many more numerous than those of the woman who has the husband. Like God is saying this to Sarah. Sarah had to go through all of these years of infertility and Hagar got to have a baby as a young woman, but look at Sarah's life. Look at her legacy. She Mm. is the mother of all of us who are in the faith. Like look at her family and, and you too, Gabby are part of that family. And you are bringing more children into this family, not as a a physical mother at this point, maybe God will give you that pleasure, but look at you're discipling people. You're raising up leaders in the church. Like God is using you. You are a spiritual mother and you potentially have more children in the kingdom of God than the, the young mom who has, you know, babies the way that you would have hoped, but God is not um, he's not keeping anything good from you. Mm. He has good plans from your, for your life. And he's using you in powerful ways, even being your willingness to have this conversation with us tonight. It's such a beautiful gift. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I'm, I don't think I, I thought about it that way before. Yeah. And it brings me like, it brings me joy because, because I, I can see like, looking back on on how how he has been so gracious in allowing me to have good conversations with people and and not giving me what I wanted and I wonder what what it would have been if he given me what I wanted maybe I maybe I would be um serving him differently but this is this is something that that yeah it's beyond my my imagination and it's like my greatest desire that it's always a struggling you know with my what I want and Mm. there but my greatest desire is to 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 let him uh to let him know to others like to Mm -hmm. preach about him and Mm -hmm. this is the way that he has chosen like let it be and I remember I I'm reminded like not I'm not my own so Mm -hmm. he can do what when I told him um when not told him sorry when I recognize Christ as my savior it was not just the prayer then that's it it's like really saying you I am not my own it's you that I pledge everything Mm -hmm. and you were about you were about 18 years old when you came to Jesus is that yeah 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 it's about 18 years old yeah so that was, I mean, that was a mature decision. Like that wasn't a little girl making that decision. This is a woman saying, God, I give you my life, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not something that it was, a, I think, a spurge of the moment, but it was like very, like considering the, the scriptures and everything. Yeah. And was it right around the time of your brother's death that you came? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Did it God- was. A, yeah, Sorry. <laughs> Did it God was, use that experience then? Yeah, for sure, completely. Like he he used that hard and awful time in my life and in my parents' life for us to really know who He is, mm-hmm. and that is when, like, of course, we ask questions and things like that. But that was one of the things that that He did, the like, great things that He called our hearts to Him mm-hmm. and. I could know the gospel of grace and mercy and repent of my sins. And he used something bad and turned it into something really, really good and for an eternal purpose. So, so. In, in both of these instances, I see it, you know, in your brother's death, it was so hard, but 
look at, look at how God brought you closer to himself, yeah. uh, brought you to himself. And then this cancer even closer to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Praise, praise God. And, but the cancer is kind of freeing you of this. Yes. 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 And, and I have seen how it, it is like, it puts my eyes on things that are more important. Mm. Like, because there are many losses in it. It's like my, my, physical appearance changed that's a loss the way that I I eat now I have to eat completely different that's a loss um the way that some people perceived me or my reputation that's a loss Mm -hmm. and all those loss just show me how greater is the gain to know Christ more Mm -hmm. and to 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 go to the bible and really understand what he's doing um through the gospel in our lives day by day, as you said, I don't want to be a person that just listens and understands good theology, but also practices mm-hmm. it and, and repents and understands it and sees it and goes to their say to her savior and says, God help me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. he has done that and many other things, but I can point that those, those sins specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So beautiful. I mean, you just make me look forward to those because I'm going to have those seasons too, where I'm suffering. And I mean, there, those times can be redeemed. Like God can use those times for his good and, um, and his glory in my life. I see that in you, Gabby. It's just, it's precious. Um, and I know those losses have to be just so so there's so much to grieve so much loss. And yet I love this verse because you keep talking about the temporal versus the eternal. And that's what we learn about Sarah and Abraham. Mm. Um, in Hebrews 11, nine, it says by faith, he Abraham, uh, stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, others, um, co-heirs of the same promise for he, and I include Sarah too. They were looking forward to the city that has foundations whose architect and builder is God it's further on. It says in verse 13, they all died in faith. Although they had, they had not received the things that were promised, but they saw them from a distance and they greeted them and they confessed they were, they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. I mean, what beautiful faith. And that's, I, so I see you contrasting the temporal with the eternal. Mm -hmm. And one, one of the things that I said in this book I'm writing is I think we often, um, you know, we talk about the eternal as if it's, you know, it's, uh, not real, like it's eternal, but it's also real. Like we're going to walk, like picture yourself walking down a road with, with trees overhead, right? Picture yourself having food and experiencing good fellowship. All it's eternal, but it's real. And so you're looking forward to, to what's actually going to last. Mm -hmm. And the promises, like, cause we don't actually have a lot of promises for here and now, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can't sh- show you the verse that says, Gabby, I know that you will be healed of cancer because of this verse. I, there is no verse, right? Or I know that because you have a longing for a husband, like, here's the verse that tells me you're going to have a husband and children. Like if there was a verse like that, I'm sure we would know it, right? <laughs> yeah, to all the single women here, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. But we have promises that can anchor our soul promises that are eternal and, and they are, it's, it's a real, it's a reality. Like we, our bodies are going to be raised up from the dead and we will get to experience life again. So tell me, what are some of the promises that you're holding on to right now during this suffering time? That's a good question. Uh, Yes. Yeah. So I think um there there is one that I always go back to it over and over again and it is that our while our external body is Mm. fading away and it's going weary our internal soul like our spirit is rejoicing and it's it's uh growing so I think we're not yeah yeah being renewed that that's it Uh and I I can see that day by day as 
I approach to the moment of, I don't know if it will be in two years, in five years, in 10 years, but to see Christ, that this body, it's, it's a, it's an evidence that this will fade, that this is fading day by day and is not useful in many things now, but the other part, like the internal, the soul, what God has um, purposefully take it for eternity that is renewing every day and becoming more um, more like him so that is one and another one is that um, like you said we think that I think that there is sometimes this yeah heaven is over there right in the corner like yeah yeah we are expecting that but really sometimes I don't think about what does that mean mm-hmm. so when there, there's one part that Jesus says that he is in the gospels, that he's preparing us homes there, mm. like t- eternal homes and where we won't have any pain, where we there won't be any sorrow, but we will be with him forever. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the promises that he said to the, um, to, to the thief next to him on the cross. Yes. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Hey, uh-huh. so when I remember that, I'm like, it's something that it's it's even more real than what I can touch right now. And I have to remind myself that I am not my own. Elizabeth Elliot said um, said in in one of her journals, "Not alone, not my own." Mm-hmm. So I think we can just um, like change that to many verses on the scripture that says that how like in Ephesians how we are his Mm -hmm. how he has bought us in all Ephesians one is how he has bought us how we belong to him how we we are adopted so I think all those things are promises that I hold on to very quickly well what I love about what you said earlier is you're holding on to the promise that you have him I've heard you say that several times in this conversation Mm -hmm. he is the treasure And you will never lose him. Jesus is yours and you are his, you belong to him. And that is the most precious treasure that any of us can have is him. And when we see him, there won't be any doubt in our mind that he is the most valuable being in the universe. It's just that we can't see him right now. And I think that this cancer is allowing you to have clearer vision, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then, then most of us who are just caught up in the, you know, like you were saying, like my, what my friends are doing on Instagram or, you know, the vacations I'm taking or the clothes I'm wearing or the food I'm eating or whatever it is like, that is uh, a very temporal thing. And you're, you're latching onto the eternal and the eternal one who is yeah. yours and who is uh, has done everything possible so that you can be with him. Um, and I also love too, that you brought up that, that promise that, uh, though the outside is being wa- is wasting away the mm-hmm. inner, our inner selves were being renewed day by day. That means that little by little Gabby through this process, you are becoming more and more and more beautiful. As you're becoming more and more like Jesus, as he refines you during this time. And I see that, you know, in Sarah's story, her body was wasting away and Mm. there was, there was no way for her to have a baby. Like she was old. (laughs) She was, she had never been able to have a baby. And now she's 89 years old. And God tells her, this is the year you're going to have a baby. And she just laughs. And it's not, it's not a delighted giggle like, oh, today it's a, oh yeah, right. Kind of a laugh. And there's skepticism because she doesn't really believe that he can do what he has said he will do. Yeah. And so I think there's something really beautiful in believing that God can heal your body of cancer if he chooses to. I mean, if he can have an 89 year old woman conceive a baby, (laughs) then he can make Gabby's body completely Mm -hmm. whole again if he chooses to. But even if he did that, your, your body eventually at age 89 or some other time, you're going to die, right? Because Mm -hmm. our bodies are temporal. And so this inner beauty like this, this thing that's happening inside of you, that does not fade away. That will never die. That will keep living and uh, keep continue growing more and more beautiful in the image of Christ. And I see that in you. I mean, to be 27 years old and have this 
clarity, this, um, this perspective on life. I mean, this is beautiful. This is a, it's a beautiful work of God in your life, Gabby. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for you. I really am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's, I never, ever, ever picture myself like going through something like this. And if, if he had asked me before, would you want to, I would have said no, <laughs> God, no, <laughs> but quite looking back, I can see how he uses pain in this life because he's good and he is loving and he's complete like like wise and sovereign but most of all loving because i believe that if we are christians and we do not suffer we should ask ourselves like what is wrong <laughs> there there has to be something that uh, because there's like one of the things that um jesus said is you are going to suffer in this world mm -hmm. and that is nothing that is like you can wave it out of your life or you can just say okay no I'm going through this but no Christians are going to suffer different kinds of trials mm -hmm. and and I rejoice in knowing that it's because God loves us that wants us to set our eyes into him mm -hmm. and what he has for us rather than being content in a, like 20 uh, years old house or in like mm -hmm. 50 years of things that come and go and that's, mm -hmm. that's it. so yeah it's it's hard but it's worth it completely mm -hmm. and and now I have to think of the now I pray a little bit more carefully but at the same time mm -hmm. realizing that he's a god that um that brings pain not because he's cruel or because mm -hmm. he is he just wants us to be so like godly like that yeah no he walks with us mm -hmm. like in all the different days and circles he walks and he shows himself very clearly through the word through the holy spirit through um the the body of believers as well that mm -hmm. walk with, uh like in through suffering so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah praise god yeah. I love the part in um, Abraham and Sarah's story where God asked them to leave everything behind all of everything that was secure for them, their family, their homeland, like move to a foreign country, live in a tent, like we said earlier for the rest of their lives. I mean, that's just, you could call that almost cruel. Like that seems hard, but, mm -hmm. but what I love is when they arrived, the moment they arrived in the promised land, God appeared to them. He mm. showed, he showed them the land. He didn't, he didn't just show them where it was. He met them there. Mm. And I, God does, he asks us to leave so much behind, right? There, there are so many things in the rear view mirror. There are the th so many things that God has asked you to leave behind this very year. And yet he mm. has been with you in the darkest moments. And, you know, I heard you at the beginning, just say, these have been the sweetest times. The they've been really sweet times of fellowship. You know, I wonder, like, I heard you, you say, like, would I trade it? Like, would I ask God for this again? Would I go back and erase that journal entry? <laughs> if I knew that he was going to give me cancer as a result. And I wonder if Sarah, if she had the choice, you know, if I could have had a baby, mm -hmm. you know, gotten pregnant the very first mo moment or the very first month after God made the promise, you know, when she was, I think, uh, 40 some years old, yeah. would I have had the baby then versus waiting until age 89? I mean, look at what an 89 year old woman got to give birth to a baby. <laughs> like that was miraculous. And she got to experience something amazing. Mm -hmm. And would she give up that sweet communion with God? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't know how she would answer that question, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I don't think that she would have been able to see or taste like that God is real because it's, it's going through fire and like waiting. And yeah. I just like maybe picture myself in her, in her position, like just many, many long seasons of waiting and asking. And then you see Hagar there and yes. she tries like uh, right. figure out a way and okay here it is maybe mm -hmm. this is the way that the lord will bring me like mm -hmm. a child and, and then seeing uh seeing them like the hagar and i don't know in english Ish is ishmael, ishmael, ishmael. Mm -hmm. growing 
and her at the same time, like asking what, what happened? And then seeing that God kept his promise and that he was real and that he is real. Yes. I, I bet that in my, in my shoes, in my position, I would have been like, oh my gosh, who have I thought that you were? Mm-hmm. Like now I can see. Yes. really and and that is what one of the uh in first peter it says that that is what he does with our faith it does not only um put it through the fire to purify it yeah but fire also shows that it's real it's real it's mm-hmm. something that it's oh well it's i real. don't know it's yeah real. so that, that's the hope that that i have and and it is a hope that will grow and not fade the way and then you you can see like in the in the story of abraham and sarah how the generations and the generations yeah. were like praising the lord and of course the people of israel were in some places a little bit crazy but <laughs> at the end like you can see god coming back to them again and reminding them mm. like and and pulling them back to himself yeah that is that is very encouraging That's beautiful. I see in Sarah's story and in your story that God is uh, proving himself to you, right? (laughs) He's, he's showing himself to be faithful. Um, And he is real. These promises he has made to you are real. And he is proving them over and over and over, but it requires faith because not all of his promises have been fulfilled in your life yet, but they will. So Gabby, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. It's so, it's been so inspiring. And, um, I, we are praying that God will heal your body. Um, but we know that your soul is completely safe in God's hands. So we rejoice in that. So thank you so much for walking through this with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Shan. I really love it. So 